What does it take to start a business? It's a great American dream story. There's something inside a lot of people when they hear like, you sold your house, you quit your job, you built a brewery. How do you stand out in a crowded marketplace? No one's gonna know that our product is good, especially when it goes onto the shelves, unless, you know, the, that packaging and the marketing is there. Once you hit the shelf, you're competing with everybody else. And when you're ready to grow your brand, what's the first step? And I've been doing our design work up until now, and. I'm not like 100% sure of myself. In this series, we'll give you a rare glimpse of what happens behind closed doors. We'll follow creative directors Matthew Encina and Ben Burns as they lead their client, Hamilton Family Brewery, through the branding process from start to finish. This is Building a Brand. This is Blind, a brand strategy design consultancy based in Santa Monica, California. Since 1995, Blind has used the power of design to help diverse clients reach their customers and stand out in the marketplace. My name is Ben Burns. I am the digital director here at Blind, and I'm also a brand strategist. I'm Matthew Encina. I'm a creative director here at Blind, and me and Ben are leading the team here as we move forward in this uh, expedition rebranding Hamilton Family Brewery. Scott walks in one day. He's our executive producer. And he's like, hey, you want to join me on this call? It's a lead. It's a brewery. I think you'd be a good fit for it. I'm like, yeah, sure. It's kind of random out of the blue. So we jump on a call. And on the other side of the phone, I, I mean, I could hear his beard through the phone. I'm like, this is my people, right? <laughs> we, we go through the, the normal first meeting questions that we ask people. And part of that is trying to unearth the budget. Mm -hmm. And when we get there, I can tell that it, we may not be a good fit. And so I kind of left that call thinking like, maybe we won't be able to help him. But on that first call, I could tell that he was real, he was genuine, and he really wanted guidance. He wanted help because his business was growing and the brand needed to catch up. Josh, along with his wife, Kristen, have operated Hamilton Family Brewery for almost five years with one simple philosophy. Beer is like the icing on the cake of, sure. of life, you know, it's, it's something to be thankful for, shared with friends, serve good beer to good people, that kind of thing. If they can get behind that, that we love people, love beer, and think we'll have a customer for life. So I think some of the big things that I understand from your, your initial meeting with Josh is that they're looking to scale, right? They're almost bursting at the seams at this point. They've been operating this business for a couple of years. Josh has been doing everything DIY himself and that now they're ready to hit retail, hit the shelves. And that's a very important moment for a business like this because once you hit retail, once you hit the shelf, you're competing with everybody else. There's so much competition. So while he might be doing very successfully in his own small town within his brewery, now he's gonna be competing with all the big boys on the shelf. So I'm hoping that's something that we can help him with in terms of redesigning his brand identity and repositioning his business properly so that he stands out in the market. What is a rebrand? Well, first let's start by defining what a brand is. According to Marty Neumeyer, a brand is a person's gut feeling about an organization, person, or company. This is influenced by their visual aesthetic, the sound of their messaging, and their overall positioning in the market. So a rebrand is simply an adjustment of the customer touch points that affect the impact of the overall experience. Sometimes it's an incremental update and other times it's a complete makeover. Before we know how much work needs to get done for Hamilton Family Brewery, we need to sit down with them and understand their brand, their customers, and their goals. Who is Hamilton Family Brewery? Hi, my name's Josh Hamilton. Uh, my wife and I own Hamilton Family Brewery in Rancho Cucamonga, California. I'm Kristen Hamilton. I am co-owner with along with my husband of Hamilton Family Brewery. The whole way we got into this was uh, I brewed in my backyard and I fell in love. And it was the first time I ever knew, like, this is what I want to do with my life. And I never really had a passion. It's like, that's what I want to spend my life's work doing right. until I met beer. But there was no way. It's so expensive to do it. Um, my wife and I had a second baby on the way. I was working two full-time jobs. And I was like, man, I'm doing all this so I can pay a mortgage for a house that all I do is sleep in. I had an idea to ask my wife one night on a long drive home, like, what if we sold the house and we took the money and we started 
the brewery. We sold the house in like three days, moved in with her folks. We found that spot, got that open in about seven months, which at the time was like unheard of. Most breweries took about a year and a half. Yeah. We did it in seven and we needed to. I mean, we were down to like, our bank account was at zero on opening day. You know, and that was the first time we were about to open the doors, we're getting ready and my wife's like, what if no one shows up? And I was like, oh, I, hadn't had a, I hadn't had a chance to think about that, you know, but luckily we opened the door 15 minutes early and there was a line of people yeah. and it just never stopped. So now they're up and running, but a craft brewery needs original and enticing flavors to keep people coming in. So where did those initial ideas come from? I'm shopping with the kids at the grocery store and I see a display of a certain fruit. And I think, oh gosh, that would be pretty cool. We should add that to a beer. So it's kind of just like, there's a whole lot of input around me forming that kind of thing. Like the whole idea for Mango was, they were on sale at Stater Brothers when we were shopping. A buddy, yeah, a buddy and I, when we were just home brewers, we were, we, were just, yeah. we, were, we were buying stuff to barbecue in the backyard and also brew a batch of beer. It's like where we all started and they had mangoes for a buck a piece. I was like, do you think those would be good in beer? And he was like, yeah, let's, let's grab them. Let's try and put them in this pale ale. And then over the years, the pale ale turned into an IPA, into a double IPA, and then mm -hmm. now it's double mango. Like a rule I have personally is like, if, is it a beer that I'm gonna want to drink another pint of? Mm -hmm. And then that'll determine if we're gonna brew it again. So the first time you met Josh and you learned about them as a client, what was your take on them? The business was more to him than dollars and cents, and the business was more to him than making a product. Mm -hmm. It was about people, it was about connecting with people. Yeah. And he summed that up with that, uh, the tagline, love people, love beer. It's our mission statement, it's our goal, and it's our driving force. And we put it in that order intentionally because it's not love beer, love people. What's the, what good is the greatest bottle of beer if there's no one there to drink it? Yeah, and I've been doing our design work up until now, and I'm not like 100% sure of myself. Oh man, that logo. <laughs> I always thought the logo and I, I wanted to put so much meaning that it does not get translated at all. We were Rancho's first craft brewery. I was born and raised out here, so I was proud of that. So we wanted to tie our brand in with uh, the historic elements of the city being their first brewery. So this is a uh, Cucamonga Falls. It's Dude, are you expecting your customers to be like Nicolas Cage in that, in that <laughs> national treasure movie? I mean, come they can on. decipher with the meaning yeah, of this it's thing. Like, what, what prize is, is at the end of this road? I don't know, that crazy, like all in, four color, small font, weird stuff logo I made, it, it caused more problems just from a practical standpoint. Like, how does this look on a bottle cap? How does it look on a koozie? Uh, obviously the logo is like super cluttered. It's really dense. It's not legible in small sizes. These are, this is all the stuff that he, that he wanted to fix. Mm -hmm. But when I talked to Josh and realized how much hidden meaning was behind every single element of the logo. We weren't even communicating to our customer what we were hoping to. There was so much like insider like Yeah, we were trying to create, create a sense of like history and yeah. heritage. And, and people were like, oh, family and, tree. Hamilton yeah, family tree. that was an accident. The tree is on there because it's part of the Hamilton yeah. So people just stuff, assumed so. whatever they thought it was and that wasn't even what we were going for. So a logo is more or less the face of a company. So what makes for a good logo? Well, according to legendary designer Sagi Habib, it must be three things. It must be appropriate for the context, it must be memorable, and it must be simple so that it works at any scale, whether it's really tiny on your phone or on the side of a building. For Hamilton Family Brewery, it's gonna to apply to a lot of customer touch points. Basically what we're gonna be doing is redoing his logo, mm -hmm. doing two versions of packaging, mm -hmm. templates that he can tap into and, and edit at a later date. And then we're also gonna be doing his website. Mm. And we're gonna try and tie everything together with a style guide that he can use to influence all the other touch points of his brand. Right. If we can come up with like the parameters we play and what represents us well and everybody loves bearded hipster, dragon slaying, unicorn, cupcake flying, ninja rainbows. Right. Um, <laughs> how does, what is, what is Hamilton's version of a ninja rainbow? Are you, uh, are you worried about this one? Um, I'm kind of half and half right now. Josh could go to retail with the brand he has now, but it would be a bumpy, bumpy road. And so I want to smooth things out for him. On our next episode, we're going to take you through discovery, the process that we use to help a client refine how they see themselves and define who they're trying to market to. This whole thing is just about me asking questions and then the questions are meant to spark a conversation. I think our product is good, but no one's gonna know that our product is good, especially when it goes onto the shelves unless, you know, the, that packaging and the marketing is there. Our hometown crowd gets us, you know, they, 
We've shook their hands in the tasting room. We've made connections there, and that, that goes a long way with them. But now it's going to be a can of beer sitting on a shelf that someone's going to need to connect with. In future episodes, we'll use that information to create stylescapes, which will help to define the look and feel of Hamilton's new identity. Starting to use the crest or badge, right, this little shield thing. I can see that replicated throughout. I really like the colors quite a bit. All right, so we're calling this one <clears throat> Built to Last. This is really cool. These stylescapes will be the backbone of the logo work, website design, and branding we will create for them. I've literally not seen anything Emmanuel had done. And his skill with the pen and paper and the way that he constructs his uh, lockups, it's just awesome. And so as soon as he opened his book, I was like, <gasps> Stay tuned for building a brand right here on The Future. So the whole purpose of this part of the discussion is to talk about the deliverables. Okay. Um, um, what do you think deliverables mean? <laughs>